Now let's dive into some more specific types of UV light disinfection technology. So can you tell us more about filtered 222 nanometer far UVC light disinfection technology? Absolutely. What I'd like to do is, is spend a little bit more time talking about um, UV in general. Um, it is, you know, a, a form of electromagnetic radiation. It's broken into the three bands of, of UVC, UVB, and UVA. And as Dr. Sliney mentioned, the reason we focus on UVC is because of uh, its uh, known um, impact on both bacteria and viruses and being able to interact directly with the RNA and DNA molecules and essentially making it so that the pathogen isn't able to replicate. Um, and in that process, that's how we are inactivating the pathogens and uh, reducing our exposure to them. This, um, this is kind of what's known about UVC. And, and UVC is, uh, their, their wavelengths that range from 100 uh, to 280 nanometers. So broad range of wavelengths that are going to target both bacteria and viruses, uh, get right at the RNA and DNA molecules. So why do, why do we differentiate what far UVC is? Uh, far UVC is considered to be wavelengths under 230 nanometers. And the reason we differentiate the far UVC is that it, in addition to its effectiveness against pathogens, it has a very different interaction when it comes to how it interacts with, with human cells. And because um, 222 nanometers specifically is absorbed by uh, proteins in, in our cells, both uh, the uh, uh, dead skin cell layer on the skin and also um, our tear layer that covers our cornea and basically is protecting our cornea from exposure um, to that uh, far UVC. This is the fundamental reason why this wavelength doesn't have the same type of um, uh, potential harm that the more conventional 254 germicidal UV wave wavelength does. So with the far UVC, uh, we, are, we are naturally protected um, from exposure to those wavelengths in the deeper layers of our skin and uh, protected from the exposure to, to our cornea. To provide the guidance um, and, and looking at how much exposure we can have um, for um, all wavelengths of, of UV, but again, focusing on, on the 222 nanometers, there's a, an organization called the ACGIH or the American Conference of Governmental Industrial Hygienists. And this organization establishes what are called time-weighted average threshold limit values, which are essentially um, doses that uh, workers can be exposed to without adverse um, health effects. And these values are reported for um, eight hour periods of time. So for 222 nanometers, that uh, threshold limit value is currently set at 22 millijoules per centimeter squared. So that is the uh, acceptable dose um, for this wavelength over an eight hour period. And just to compare and contrast how that is uh, compared to conventional uh, 254 nanometer germicidal UV, the threshold limit value for that wavelength is currently set at six millijoules per centimeter squared. So these threshold limit values are, are very much, uh, you could say the, the math behind um, behind the, the biologic uh, difference that, that I was describing. Uh, the ACGIH uh, publishes guidelines, and uh, these guidelines are adopted into standards worldwide, um, including the IEC 62471, which are, is our photobiological safety of lamps and, and lamp systems. And this is the standard to which uh, UL um, tests uh, germicidal UV products for um, the photobiological safety assessment and also certification. Now let's bring in filters. So why is the filter such a key part of this technology and what might happen if there is no filter, Janine? Before, before I dive into the filter, I'll talk a little bit about the, the technology itself that is uh, creating the 222 nanometers. Today's technology is based on a krypton chlorine eczema lamp. Um, this is an arc discharge 
light source. Um, it, it's employing a special, a special chamber that's filled with those noble gases of krypton and chlorine, um, operates completely mercury free and without electrodes. Um, and it strikes with no warm up time and it's a very uh, stable uh, light source uh, when it's operating. Um, but the key uh, point here with respect to the filter is that the native uh, spectral power distribution of the krypton chlorine excimer lamp, it has, it has a, a spike at 222 nanometers, but there's a tail that goes into those longer wavelengths, um, 254 nanometers, 274 nanometers. And uh, these are the wavelengths that have that greater potential for or harm um, and, can, and can more deeply penetrate the skin and, and reach the cornea. So without, um, without the filtering, those wavelengths are present in the krypton chlorine excimer lamp. So when we are able to apply the filter, we essentially remove um, all of the wavelengths above 230 nanometers. And we do have a very uh, narrow band uh, emission that's, that, that is then focused on 222 nanometers. Um, the filter technology is, is based on uh, dichroic technology uh, using new uh, thin film materials that provide the, that desired transmission and uh, suppression bands. Um, and, and it's uh, coated on, um, uh, on a substrate material made from quartz, which is the highest melting glass available. And uh, as we were getting in before a little bit about the um, about the ACGIH guidelines, is that uh, with with it is with the filtered 222 nanometers that the uh, guideline is at 22 millijoules per centimeter squared. So if we would add in some of those other wavelengths, we need to account for those emissions um, as we look at the ACGIH published curve. And it would mean that you would have to reduce the output by about 25% uh, in order to be able to use an unfiltered 222 nanometer light source. And that would mean that you would not be able to deliver, you would have essentially 25% less power to be able to target the pathogens in the space. So it greatly reduces the effectiveness, the whole reason you're, you're installing the filtered 222 nanometer far UVC in the first place. And in addition to that, uh, with the filter, you don't, you, you're completely eliminating those more harmful wavelengths um, in the first place. 